Hi guys, this is the C64, which I've had for a couple of weeks now. Um, I said I was going to do a video to give my impressions of it. Um, I don't know if I'll call this a full review, more of an impressions really, because I've seen some really in-depth videos on YouTube about this, um, about how to program on it and things like that. I'm not going to cover any of that, I'm just going to say what I think of it, show you some games. Um, it's the reason I got this is for the games, mainly. Um, so yeah, I had this for a couple of weeks now and I think it's brilliant, it's really good. I never had a Commodore 64 back in the 80s. I had an Amstrad CPC 464, um, which I remember when I opened it on Christmas morning, being a bit upset because I wanted a Commodore 64, but my parents didn't know what they were buying. So we had an Amstrad, but I, I loved it. Um, some brilliant games on it over the years. Um, I think it's probably the best 8-bit computer. Um, but I, I always wanted to come to a 64, though. Um, I know the sound is far superior. The music's really good. Um, the graphics are shite, though. <laughs> uh, I should have come up with a script for this video. Um, yeah, I mean, the colours are quite washed out on the Commodore 64 um, compared to the Amstrad. Uh, I think the sprites are more detailed than the Amstrad, um, if you ask me. I know I'm going to get a lot of downvotes for uh, for saying that because a lot of people that will watch this will be Commodore 64 fans. Uh, and I'm one as well, but I grew up with the Amstrad, so that's where my heart is. But uh, I wanted to check out the exclusives on here, and there's a lot of new games still being made, a lot of homebrew stuff, um, which is really interesting. So that's something I really was interested in when I was getting one of these. Um, so I... I've played Commodore on um, on my PlayStation Classic, um, which is hacked. I've got RetroArch on there, um, and it, it runs fine. Um, but this has a working keyboard, which it's it's just so nice. Um, you don't have to bring up a virtual keyboard. Quite often, you'll be prompted on screen to press a key or something, especially with all the trainers at the start of games. So just having the actual keys, like run stop. Um, and space and the, the function keys are quite common ones just to get past the trainers. Um, and also I quite like text, text adventures as well. I made a couple of those on here. Um, so having the built-in keyboard is brilliant. Plus it comes with this micro switch joystick, which, um, which is really good. It feels really authentic. Um, quite happy with the joystick. It was definitely quite stiff for the first couple of days probably, and it even squeaked, but um, the squeaking stops now. Um, it's still a bit stiff, but it, it's it's pretty comfortable. Um, doesn't have any rubber suckers underneath, which is a shame. So I tend to just hold it on my lap um, with my left hand in control with my right hand. So I've got a lot of cables on here. I'll try and tidy up, but it's only so much you can do. Um, yeah, so the joystick pretty happy with. Um, these buttons here, you can navigate the menus, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and it's got five buttons here. These are quite sensitive. You don't really have to press it all the way in and it can register, but um, but happy with it. It's very comfortable. A um, little bit stiff, but um, pretty good. So this is a USB joystick as well. I haven't tested it on the PC though. I'll have to try that at some point. Um, anyway, um, quick run around to the machine before I turn it on. I'm really happy with the keyboard. The keys feel really nice. Um, around the back, there's sort of something a bit weird I wanted to point out. These cables, they they don't feel like these connections are too sturdy, really. And they're upside down as well, the, the ports. I don't think I can show it very well without, maybe I'll just unplug it. So all of the USB ports are this way around. Um, I don't know about you, but all of my other USB ports, I plug them in this way. But all of the ports, there's one on the back and there's three on the side. Let me see, three, yeah. So there's four USB ports, which is really nice, but they're, they're upside down, so it's not the usual way, it's that way. And it's the same with HDMI, like um, on my other devices, I'm used to having the HDMI cable this way up. But for this, it's this way, and same with the micro USB, which is the power. Um, just curious on why they installed it upside down, but... Uh, so I don't know if you can see that, it's that way up. Um, but my other mini machines, I'm fairly sure, going that way. Um, one thing I, let me just try and fit this back in there. 
Let me just put that at Sonic while I plug this cable back in. Yeah, so one thing I was quite happy about was that it comes with a power supply as well, like my other minis. Come with a micro USB cable, but then you have to plug it into either the TV to power it, or you need to use your own plug. So this comes with a plug, um, which is really good. So I just got it plugged in down there with my massive cables and a bunch of other things. Um, I would have liked it to be a bit longer. Um, it's pretty much stretched to its max from there. It's about a meter and maybe 1.2 meters or something. Just about reaches for this, but if I take it to another room, pardon me, I just uh, <laughs> ate some food. Wow, I should have, should have rehearsed this video. Anyway, um, yeah, so I would have liked that to be a bit longer, but it's fine for this room, which is mainly where I'm going to be keeping it. So I've got it plugged into my monitor here, um, and then I think I've got my soundbar just behind it, which is connected to the monitor as well. So I'm just going to boot that up now. Um, I've also got a USB stick plugged in. Um, this controller here, I've tried some other controllers to see what is compatible to have as a second joystick. The PlayStation 3 wired one seems to work. Um, I've also tried 360 wired, didn't work. Xbox One wired, didn't work. Um, did I try anything else again? I tried my PlayStation Classic controller and my um, Mega Drive Classic controller and they didn't work, but this one does. Um, I don't really use it in games, but I will show you what I use it for in a bit. Um, so yeah, I've got a USB stick, tested a few for compatibility as well. SanDisk, this one is, works fine. I did have a couple that didn't work though. I had some cheap um, micro SD card adapter, which didn't work. Um, actually no, it worked with the SanDisk micro SD card, but then I had another, a Kingston one, which didn't read. So generally it worked with most stuff, but a couple of things it wouldn't read. Um, anyway, let's turn it on. So there is a bit of a splash screen. Let me just turn the speaker on as well. I think by the time my monitor powers up, the smash screen is pretty much finished, so we kind of catch the end of it. Um, this is where things might get a, even more amateur, because I've got a tripod just here. Splash screen. There you go. That was amateur, wasn't it? Yeah. So I've got a tripod. I'm going to try and connect this so I don't have to hold my phone while I'm playing the game. I haven't tried this before, so... We'll see. Hopefully you can still hear me and the game as well. But it might catch the back of my bald head, so we'll have to see. See how it goes. Okay, so this is the, the interface. Um, it's got 64 games built in. Let's just have a quick drink. <clears throat> I haven't played all of them, um, I've mainly been playing stuff off the USB stick, but I will show you around the menu. So all of these ones, um, you just press it and it jumps straight in. Um, I'll go into one that I used to play on my Amstrad, which is side mode. Actually, I used to play the first side mode, side mode. this is side mode 2 on here. Um, but everything loads really quick, which is nice. You just hit the fire button and you're straight in. Ish. There we go. So, yeah, just having the keyboard is brilliant. Like, press 5 to switch between music and sound effects. Um, if it was, in fact, it has got a virtual keyboard, which was put there for the mini, really. So you press this button here on the, on the joystick and it brings this up. You can press virtual keyboard and then you gotta do that, but the the beauty of this machine is you could just just press it and you straight in. So I'll keep the sound effects on this one just to give you a quick demo and hit one to start. I can show off my amazing skills now. This game is hard. I haven't got very far. I think that's gonna get me, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that was bad. Okay, 
See how far we get. This game is really hard. Close one is hard as well. Awesome. I'll spend the whole video trying to get through this screen. So that's side row two. Um, if we go down here, you've got a few different options. Um, this will change just the screen ratio. Um, I like it on that one, that's what I'm used to. You've got a few others if you're on scan lines or not. This one, I think, yeah, this just changes the language. I'm not, I don't think that leaves its own menu, but anyway. So you've got most of the settings are in here. Um, you can switch between VIC-20 um, Commodore 64 on here, but also plays VIC-20 games. You can change the way it boots up if you want it to go into the GUI or boot into the classic um, basic screen. Um, nothing interesting in there. That's for updating the firmware. Um, hasn't been an update for a while. Hopefully they'll keep supporting this there. Um, this will reboot it into basic. Um, shut down the factory reset. Um, but then, let me just hit this button, I'll just turn the music off, let me just go back. There we go, you can turn the menu music off, because I think once you've heard it a hundred times, that's probably enough. So, um, yeah, ignore the other folders, this, um, I use this stick for other things as well, but I've um, got my Commodore 64 stuff in here. Um, so I'll just show you, there's a few options down here, just folder navigation, like you can go up a level. This is the fast loading. Uh, mostly it works fine, but occasionally a game won't load unless you, you just hit where it's highlighted. Button three, you just press that to turn that on and off. Is that showing up okay on my camera? I'm just going to move it and check. Can you see that? Yeah, maybe. Hopefully. Okay, so I'll keep that turned on. Um, yeah, I really like the system. It just runs beautifully. It's like like having a computer. Um, doesn't feel like an emulator, even though it is emulation. Um, it, ju it just runs really well, and it, it looks great, and it feels great, sounds great. So I've got no complaints at all, except that it's not an Amstrad, but I uh, can't really blame it for that. So um, yeah, I mentioned the homebrew stuff. Um, a lot of the games that are still coming out over the last few few years are really good so i've got a, a bunch of which i'll i'll just show you a few of um i'll get into this one first dot cosmos um this one's actually a free download but it's, it's pretty impressive and i think it says when it loads up that it only uses 16k as well some competition that it was in last year um yeah so if you hear any screaming, that's the neighbor's kids, so they're a pain. There is sound in this, but I think we'll need to shut the mind and see it out. So I'm quick run around. It's a pretty good game, actually. It's pretty cool. Um, I'll pause it a sec. Another thing um, which I notice is the it, it doesn't feel like there's any input lag. It feels really responsive. Like you just, it, it just feels really smooth, really responsive and fast. Um, they just controls really well, like all of the games, they just feel really snappy. So I'm just going to turn the sound down a little bit, so it doesn't drown me out. Um, but yeah, the, the music is great on this system, um, much better than the other 8-bit machines. Um, I'm just trying to play this game a bit, so I need a red key to open this, so I just need to play this way. I've played the beginning of this before, in fact. Let me see if I've got a save state. No, I didn't save this one. But if I want to save it, you just hit the button on the joystick, go to save, and then just choose a slot, and then you can, it saves a snapshot. There we go, collect keys for different doors. So I've got a red key, I can't get through the blue door. So I'll go back this way. Yeah, just trying to remember if it was spiral up to um, jump. There we go. So the gameplay mechanic in this one is you hit fire to switch between um, this retro, even more retro style of graphic and the, the other one. Um, let me just read these boxes. Okay, so he's actually switching timelines. 
Yeah, so in this one, you can't control the jump. You can just jump and he'll just automatically do that arc. Uh, so I just picked another key up. If you see that power there, that means I can't switch back to this timeline until I've got some power, which we get from these computer screens. I'm going to jump this guy, but now I'm in this mode, it's going to make jumping quite tricky. There we go. There is a computer which will charge the power, and then I can switch between. See, so it uses up a bar every time I hit it. And that recharges it. Um, it's, a, it's just a fun game. I haven't played it a massive amount, but I've had a go. Um, so you can see in this timeline, you've got a ladder that gets you up there. In this one, you haven't. So that's why you have to switch between them. Because some have blocked paths and some don't. I've got a key, I can go down there. I can switch here because um, I'm by a computer and we've got a ladder, which I don't think I need for going down, more for coming back up. So I need to go down here. Yeah, it's just a really fun game. Um, definitely check it out if you've got a Commodore like this or if you play it on emulators, it's a good game. Um, yeah, I've got quite a few. I think I just downloaded um, a compilation and I've just been going through it but there's a lot of good games on here some not particularly good this one man cave I thought was quite fun I really liked the storyline on this one um, it's about a guy like me who uh, gets married has kids and then he's his kind of freedom's over and he's got his man cave but his kids find his um, private possessions and hide them around the house <laughs> So this is about just um, collecting them before before his wife catches him. Let me just um, hit space to load it up. Okay, um, yeah, train screens, they're just a breeze to, to bypass um, with, with a built-in keyboard. Just hit the button and you're in. This feels much more natural. Um, or cheeks, no. Music's good on this game as well. Just let that play for a minute. Classic 80s tune. So I think this game came out in the last few years, I'm not sure what year it was. Be careful what I say on these videos because I've got a little boy and he, he'll probably watch this. So. Uh, okay, I'll just skip that one and get into the game. Yeah, cool music, um, quite nice graphics as well this game, it's just quite fun. Um, one thing, if you do play it, um, it's got an inertia option where um, it, it makes the controls feel not much fun when it's on solo, I prefer it um, off. But the story's along the bottom if anyone wants to read that while I'm waffling. Um, but yeah, it's a good fun game, quite like it. Um, I think this one costs a few dollars, but it's like two or three, it's not much.
Okay, so here we go, level one, easy peasy. It's not that easy actually, but um, I think I got to level two and that's where we go. So these flashing white objects are his magazines which you have to collect. But you have to avoid your kids. I think if they touch you, you lose your life. And you've got your stress meter going up all the time as well. You have to take, I think you can carry a few magazines and you have to take them back to that bin. This is your man cave down on the bottom floor. So every time I pick them up, the number of mags um, decreases, I think, and then, so there's 11 left on this level. There's a couple of places you can hide, like plant pots. So fairly simple game. I just um, I just quite like it. The graphics are nice, the music's nice. It's pretty good. So I spend a lot of my time just playing these um, homebrew games, and um, I've also looked at some of the back catalog. I'll show you some of that as well. Um, yeah, I'll just come out of this one. Um, I did make a big list of games, thinking oh, I'll show you all of these ones. We'll see how it goes. It's quite a long list though. So. Um, yeah, Big Mouth Speech. That That's kind of fun. Um, it looks like a basic screen when you load it up. I'm not sure. I don't think this was a new game, actually. I think it says like 1980-something. Okay, he did just speak then, but I was talking over him. Yeah, it's just kind of a quirky, fun thing. Like I said, I like text adventures, so quite often I'll just go in there and say random things to see uh, what kind of reaction it gets, but um, it's quite cool. You can just type speak and then say, I don't know. Hello, my name is Bob. I wish I was an Amstrad. <laughs> okay. Make sure it's loud enough. You see, that's just hours of fun. That is good. That's good. I like that. So there's that one. Um, I think my favourite game on my Amstrad was Bruce Lee. So one of the things I really wanted to do on this was to play Bruce Lee 2 and 3, um, which are more recent homebrew ones. I don't think they were released on the Amstrad. So I've had a quick game of these. I played Bruce Lee 2 on PC already, actually, but... Um, it's it's really nice to turn it on this as well. You just go into it. It's great. Just everything just runs flawlessly and just loads up really quick. I'm used to having an old tape. I know it would take five minutes and then come up with an error, but um, it's just really nice. and we're in and um, just controls really nice with the joystick. Another uh, blind to that. Didn't have to kill him, I just felt like it. Yeah, here we go. This is this game is quite hard actually. This game is hard, but I guess that's how games work. Yeah, I did it. Let's go. That's that's tricky done. skills here, the pro game obviously. That was close. I can do this. Uh, I was playing this earlier, that's why I don't look too lost. I know that it's this way now. Oh, I missed the jump. See, I know these are 
sort of basic graphics, but it doesn't feel dated to me. It's it's a lot of fun. I think I'd rather play this than Assassin's Creed or something like that. Oh, how silly! I hope you can't hear my neighbours. They make an absolute racket all day, all day. I'm not going to play this all day, but I might come back to it later after the video is finished. Yeah, I'm really happy with the Bruce Lee games and having those on here. Yeah, there's a lot of really good games for this system, and I'd, I'd say this is the best way to play them outside of having an actual one, maybe, or maybe an FPGA one if you were really serious. But yeah, to me, it, it just feels like, <laughs> just feels like the real thing. Anyway, yeah, Bruce Lee 2, really good. Um, there's another game, which is a homebrew one, which is quite similar. Um, haven't given it much time yet. Uh, it's called Tiger Claw. Um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. I've had a quick go of it, and it seems a lot like Bruce Lee from initial glance of anyway. Spacebar to exit, yep. Few menus to get through. Okay, so how do I start? Oh, just press fire. Okay. Have a drink. So the characters are smaller, but they, they're quite detailed, and it, it looks quite nice. And you've got a few different attack moves as well. I thought I could find that, I kind of need to go this way. It's a pretty cool game. Up, I think once they have gone and it's game over. Yeah, last time. This is where I die. Probably. The sound is clear on this, so I'm going to have to play it back after the two. There's a massive chicken on the ground. I think I'll be back. <laughs> oh. Let's turn up this light. It's tricky. There we go. No. Three of them. Four. Oh. Got my chicken. I haven't played this much, I don't really know where I'm going. Wow, hard. But pretty good, that's fun, it's a good game. Um, let's see, what else should I show you? So, you've got the save and load state, um, which is pretty good. Um, I haven't shown you basic yet. One thing, I, I don't really use it much, I know you can write programs in there. I um, haven't done that yet. I will have a play at some point. Um, but occasionally a game won't load on here. Like I've got one 
which is um, called The Wild Bunch, which um, was never released on the C64. It used to be one of my favourite games on the Amstrad. Um, so someone has remade it for C64, which is good. Um, but if I try and load it through here, it will just kind of, the screen will just keep flashing. It won't actually load. But I did have a look at it in classic mode and it works. So um, let me just demonstrate that. So if you do that, it reboots in basic. You can write your program, turn print hello, that kind of stuff. Um, you still got this menu down the bottom. So if I go to media access here, it'll go to my memory stick. Um, this screen's a bit different to the media access screen on, on the carousel, um, where you've got these down here, disk drive um, cartridge slot, so you can insert discs down there. So if I go into Wild Bunch, then it appears in the disk drive down there. And then if I go back to here, we can then do some disk commands. <laughs> so because I never owned a C64, I had to Google how you load disks. Um, and this is what it told me to do. So it's so if you do this, I don't even know what this means, comma eight, but anyway, uh, track the list. Then it'll show me what's on the disk. Um, I think when you load it through the carousel, it probably loads um, maybe the Wild Bunch, the first program, or it might even try and load them all in, in order. But um, the one I want to load is the GA one. So if I do load GA dot eight comma one, I think this is the one anyway. I may just have one. Then it will work. So um, it's pretty cool. That's a good game. It does load. There you go. Yeah, pretty cool game. And it uses keys as well. I don't think this even uses the joystick, so. so it's a maxi game only, not a mini. Yep, it's a good game. Named you go by and Bob. It's not actually the name. Keep the sound low. Yeah, it's a pretty cool game. You um go to various towns um, and challenge people to duels. Um, it's, it's pretty fun. And there's, there's poker as well. You can go to the saloon and play poker, which I used to like doing a lot. Um, I think the computer cheats though. So you go to choose a town to start. Um, you can, if you go to the sheriff's office, then you can have a look at the wanted poster. Okay, so this is telling you that they're, they're after a guy named Harvey Logan. Um, description, limp in the right leg. So if you see anyone in the saloon with a limp in the right leg, then you can say, hey, you're Harvey Logan, I'm bringing you in. So let's have a look, look around. There we go, a man walks in with a limp in the right leg. Do you want to challenge him? Yes. If you think he is, so I know he's Harvey Logan. Okay, take him prisoner or have a gunfight. The gunfights are pretty cool. But you have to you have to wait until he makes a move before you draw. If you take the shot first, then you, you go go down for murder. So here we go. Oh, wait. I haven't done this before yet. On the Commodore, so we'll see. At least I'm fairly sure he's gonna move and then I shoot him. But still, come on. Come on, take your gun, come on. Come on. I could be sitting here all day, I'm fairly sure he's going to try and shoot me. And then I have to shoot him. I'm just going to shoot him in a minute. I'm just going to shoot him. I'm just going to shoot him. I'm fairly sure he's going to shoot me though. There we go, there we go, he did. He went for his gun. It's self-defense. This is a good game. I recommend it. Nice. There we go. So I get a uh, reward for for killing him. Yeah. Okay, it's taken me a while to carry this battery. 
have to wait till the song finishes or something. Yep. There we go, hundred dollars. It's a good game. Um, so yeah, that's the the classic mode with the the basic commands. Um, you can mount your discs there. So if you were writing some code, you would do it in, in the classic mode and you can save it onto a, a disc or you could do the screenshot, uh, the snapshot saving as well. Um, so to come out of that, you just go exit to carousel mode. Um, but I think that's pretty much it for the system. The only thing, other thing I can show you is a couple of games, but um, it's really good, really like it. I've played on it quite a lot over the last couple of weeks. Um, mainly the new stuff, like I say. I've gone into the the old back catalogue, um, but I think because I'm used to the Amstrad versions, they don't quite have the same nostalgia. Um, not all of the time anyway, sometimes I'll prefer the Amstrad version. Um, but sometimes it's quite fine on here, so. The games like Cybernoid, um, I don't mind which system I play that on. Um, but games like I played Target Renegade on here and I couldn't get into that at all. Like I really love it on the Amstrad, but this one, it just doesn't feel very responsive, I think. Um, it's just really getting the timings right for the attacks is really hard. I think I'll even load that one up. Um, Target Renegade, let's have a look. I remember at the time, um, seeing the screenshots, I was jealous of the Commodore guys because, where is it? Because it shows you like some animation at the bottom of the guy's eyes and it just looked really good and we didn't get that on Amstrad. I was thinking, wow, it's the better version. But now I'm playing it, it's it's just really hard to play. Um, I noticed you can't have music and sound effects either on this at the same time, which you can on Amstrad, so there you go. I'm going to get downvoted a lot for mentioning Amstrad so much, but you know, whatever. Who wants to be popular? Um, okay, so there we go. But no, it's a great, great system. I'm really enjoying it. Okay, so I'm gonna switch the music off and just go with sound effects. But yeah, the music's great though. I really like it. I wonder if there's any music programs I can get hold of and give it a try. See if I can make some. Sid tunes. Oh, okay. This one looks like, yeah, good. I'm glad that's happened actually. Occasionally, again, because um, by default, it will assign this joystick to port two, but some games, like this one by the looks of it, um, expect it to be on port one. So for that, either you need to change the name of a file, which you have to do on a computer, which I haven't bothered with. You can uh, like add a flag to say use joystick one um, or if you've got two joysticks which is where this one comes in handy if I plug this one in now yeah so I don't actually play games with this but sometimes I will um, plug it in just to be able to play games where it's looking for port one um, so if I press fire on this one it's going to go in I think or it should be maybe I need to start it Let me exit up a sec. So if I start the game up, yeah, this is where it gets a little bit confusing and hopefully I can explain it easily. But if I start the game with the other controller, then that's going to assign this to port two and this to port one, which means I should be able to play it. Okay. There we go, you see. So here we go. So I really like the animation of the face down the bottom. Wow, actually knocks him up on the first go. That usually takes me at least a life to do. But I've been practicing. I forgot to turn the music off, so hopefully you can hear me. I don't know how I'm supposed to get out of this lock that he's got me in. Probably need to read the instructions. 
fairly sure you just press back and hit on the answer. Right. I really like the smooth scrolling on Commodore, which you didn't get on Amstrad from what I remember. So that's really nice. Yeah, anyway, um, the only thing, <clears throat> the only other thing I haven't gone into is the Vic 20 stuff, because it also plays um, Vic 20. Games, they've announced, announced they're going to release a VIC-20 the same style as this. Um, in fact, it's pretty much identical to this, except it's going to have VIC-20 games on the carousel and, let's say, the VIC-20 probably. Um, but it will also be able to play Commodore games, so I guess that's for people who used to own the VIC-20 might be interested in that. But anyway, you can just play VIC-20 games um, from here. Never had one back in the day. I don't even think I'd even heard of them back in the day. Um, but the games are actually not too bad, so I've got a, a bunch here. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the how you're supposed to load these, because I think sometimes it will load and sometimes it won't, so I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. Um, like now I've got a black screen. Okay, no, it's gone into basic, but I don't think it will work. But then, if I load it again, I think it actually does work. Wait a minute. Yeah, there you go. But I'm not too sure. I'm not sure what file format this is either. It's just some stuff I found. Um, yeah, very basic graphics, but still good fun. Is this going to work with a joystick? I can't remember. I think it does. Yeah. So I had a quick go at this one. It's, it's a good game actually. It's, um, I've got a I'm a bank robber apparently. I look like I don't know a fly, but a bank robber and those black things. I don't know. Are they spiders? Not sure. Why is it stopped? Okay. So those gold bars. I need to steal and take back to the start of the level. That thing's going to get me. Wow. I actually did well on this last time I played it. Maybe I've turned the difficulty up by mistake because then things are fast. I don't remember them being that quick. No. Something weird going on there. I'm good at this game usually. Um, and then what else have I tried on VIC-20? Um, yeah, there's a this one. I just like the name, it sounded quite catchy. Minor 2049. So we'll see if it loads straight away. Yep, okay. Um, occasionally as well, now I see it on the screen, um, sometimes it seems like the game isn't quite centred, it might cut some text off at the bottom or the top. Um, I've got a feeling that's to do with PAL and NTSC. Um, when you first boot the machine up, it asks which you want to choose, and then it locks it to that. So this is set to PAL. Um, if I wanted to change it to NTSC, I have to go into settings and then factory reset, so I haven't bothered. So I'm not sure if this might be cutting the bottom off, but um, it doesn't affect anything. So I've, I just left it. So occasionally you'll see that on a game, but not very often. Okay, so I played this earlier just to work out what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to just colour in the floor. Not sure if you have to kill all these guys or or not. Oh, okay, nice. So you get these plus things and then and then you can kill the enemies. Well that's close. You probably can't see because it's quite far away, but They've got like little black eyes, but when you collect these, that turns red. While it's red, then they're vulnerable and you can just uh, walk into them to kill them. Yeah, pretty good game, actually. 
It's not amazing graphics, but uh, that's not, it's not important. I died. <laughs> Good game though, yeah. I'll go through the rest of them. I haven't really played much of the Vic 20 stuff. Not sure what time it is, but I'm supposed to be playing some games with my friends this afternoon, so I might have to end this pretty soon. Um, I might just show you one more and then I'll stop the video see if the recording came out at all. Not even sure if I press the record button properly, we'll see. Yeah, it's a good game. I can do this level. I just might not do it right now. There we go. I'm not sure why I sank into the floor before. That's happened before, but I don't know why. So close, so close. Okay, good game. Um, I'm just gonna end on one from the newer stuff. Um, another game I would recommend. Um, so yeah, it supports a bunch of different formats. I've got um, some in CRT format, which is cartridge. Um, it will load um, tape and disc as well. Um, doesn't support zip files though, so it has to be unzipped. Um, got a bunch of text adventures, which are really, Really good, um, especially with the keyboard. Um, I was playing a game called Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, which um, I think I played it back in the 80s, so I had a look at that. Um, that was kind of a multi-disc thing, so I think for games like that, you're better off using the basic um, disc loading commands and disc mounting feature. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna finish off on, there's a game called, I don't know what it's called, let me just go through this. It wasn't Night and Grail, it's a follow up to Night and Grail. Something and something. Pains and Eggs, yeah. It's it's a good good game actually. I haven't bought this yet, but I, I will. I just kind of found these as a compilation and downloaded them. Um, this is in two disc format as well. I think it would be better um, if you if you buy it then it gives you like a I think it's a D eighty two file where it's all in one one file, it's just gonna be easier for playing on the maxi um, plus I'd, I'd like to support this kind of thing anyway so um so i will pick this one up um, for a few dollars yeah it's pretty fun um i haven't got very far yet i don't think i've got a save state on it maybe i have yeah i have actually but uh, i'll start a new game so it's a little bit kind of metroidy where you've got a, a map and you un unlock areas with abilities. Um, usually I don't like Metroid games that much, but this one is quite fun. I quite like the, the shooting is fairly satisfying. Um, it's pretty cool. So you start off and the responsiveness is just really nice. It just feels really fluid and, and quick. So I've just some, someone in a cloak. Um, what do I have to do to be in? Oh yeah, get this thing, yeah. So the mechanic in this is you have a pendant um, which you collect gems which give you abilities. So at the moment I've got the pendant but I haven't got any gems. I'll get one right now. There we go, so I've got a ruby one and that gives me a shoot. Um, Ability, which is fairly straightforward, but it's, it's nice and fast, and it's quite quite enjoyable shooting stuff. I shoot him, and yeah, I think someone was about to hit me in the head. Um, yeah, so this is just saying there's different crystals do different things. Um, when you get a couple, you can kind of cycle between them with the function keys, because there's a green one which you get fairly soon, which um, opens doors, so you can uh, switch between them. 
Yeah, Trembass is quite, quite enjoyable. I'm quite enjoying the exploring as well in this one. It's a good game. There we go, yeah. F1, F3, we'll change the slots. I think I heard that um, this joystick isn't the most durable, that it breaks easily and people have posted videos on how to fix it. Um, hasn't happened to me yet, but it might at some point. I know you can get a joystick off Amazon, I think it's a competition pro or something, it's like a, a remake, it looks pretty good. So I might pick that up at some point anyway to have a spare or a second joystick. Not sure what was in that chest. Okay, this is where it um, opens up and you can do quite a bit of exploring. So here's your map. I've just gone in a straight line, but now I'm going up, up, down, right. Yeah, it's a good game. I definitely recommend it. Check it out. It's very good. So I can't get across it because I can't jump that far, so it must be something I get later on. Yeah, picture of uh, tutorial type messages. Oops, oh, I forgot what button it was. <laughs> I had to jump. It's because I'm bouncing it between games all the time, if you like what I'm playing. Okay, I think this is back where I started, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So I'll go this way. Okay. Yeah, so this bit here, he says press space to save, um, but I don't think it actually does save on here. I think because if I was in classic mode and I had the disc inserted mounted, then it would, but as I'm in carousel mode, I don't think it does. So I think this is where I saved last time. So I just go into this save state one and hit it there and said, press the first button to save. And then I wanted to load, so I'm gonna just go back in and press the third one to load. Um, here's a bit of a shop, don't wanna buy anything. Yeah, anyway, I'm not sure how long I've been doing this video for and I'm going to stop it now so I don't even know if it's recorded well. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I really like the C64. I think it's a brilliant computer. I've played it quite a lot. I've tried to get my little boy on it. He's had a go. He found the joystick too stiff actually but that was when it was even stiffer. I might try and get him on it again. Um, really he only wants to play on his Switch though. But I, I love it. I think it's really good. If they do an Amstrad one I'll definitely buy that. Um, I was thinking about getting the Spectrum next, but I thought I'll get this instead. It's a lot cheaper and it'll probably give me my retro fix. But it's it's kind of made me think even more that I want the Spectrum next as well. And then if they release an Amstrad one, then I'll have the whole set. Um, but we'll see. But yeah, it's really good. Having the keyboard um, makes it really worth it. Um, the joystick is, is really good, feels authentic. Um, even if it might break at some point. Um, really good system. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Um, my friends asked me to do a um, comparison video with some Commodore and Amstrad. If you'd like to see that, let me know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to hit stop for now. See you on the next one. Bye.